What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you my top five meta decks for the April 2019 format. Now, Konami's come out and stated that we're not gonna be receiving a new ban list until about the middle or the end of the month, which means there's still plenty of opportunities to go and earn your invite to the World Championship qualifiers or attend any of the tournaments that are gonna be taking place around the world. And you're gonna wanna know what the best decks are so that you can either choose a strategy that you like the best or know what those top strategies are so you can implore what whatever the best tactic is to help beat these decks. But before we get into it, speaking of tournaments, I'm actually going to be at the Fort Worth Pro Play Games Tour event doing live streaming commentary for the event, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a $3,200 prize pool, and it's the first weekend that the Order of the Spellcaster Structure deck is going to be legal. So if you want to go and attend, I'd highly recommend it. I'll be there signing cards, taking pictures, and also doing the commentary. It's going to be a good time. But Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So kicking things off with number five, I actually have five different decks because very similarly to last format, you know, there's kind of like four decks that are vying for the top spot right now, but then that number five slot is rather elusive because there isn't really like a definitive fifth best deck. So rather than just picking one, I thought I'd quickly just cover a bunch of the different strategies that you could go with that have actually been able to top YCSs or prove that they're capable of competing in this current format. So let's go ahead and start off with Draco. Draco has been able to top pretty much every YCS for the last couple of months. It only gets like one slot in the top 32 or top 16, but it still manages to power through. It's able to run a myriad of different floodgates to slow the opponent down, but it's also able to break boards going second because of the fact you have the true Draco spells and traps, which can kind of dodge a lot of the different tricks. Not to mention the deck doesn't require an extra deck, so with cards like Artifact Scythe flying around, not needing reliance on the extra deck, can actually be a very good thing. You've got it bolstered by a bunch of draw power, just a really good overall strategy that if you like a more protect the castle style of play, then this is going to be a deck for you. Then we also have a deck like Crusadia Guard Dragon. This is an incredibly heavy combo deck that's able to kind of amass just crazy ridiculous boards ending on multiple negations. And even if the deck doesn't go first, going second, it's able to power through with its Crusadia cards, do combos and OTKs with Crusadia Equimax. It's just a very well-rounded deck. It is susceptible to hand traps at specific points, but if you build the deck correctly or maybe if you run into enough opponents that maybe are running hand traps or different things like that, it might be able to take you a very long way. There's also a deck like Trickstar, which can be played in multiple different forms. Trickstar Sky Striker is still running around. We've also seen Trickstar in more of a control build, playing stuff like Pot of Extravagance and a lot more traps. And we've seen this deck have success as well, especially at the regional and even the YCS level as well. So definitely don't count Trickstar out because it's definitely still a formidable threat. We also have decks like Subterror or Guru Control. Guru Control is just another control deck, you know, going up against some of the higher tier control decks, it may struggle a little bit, but it is able to put a lot of these other different combo and maybe mid-rangey type decks in check. Guru is just an incredibly powerful card, again, backed by a ton of different floodgates, and you've got a really powerful hand trap in some Terror Fiendus, which can pretty much just negate absolutely anything, which is just utterly absurd. And then the last deck for the number five slot is going to be Pendulum. Now, I think if I had to pick one deck out of all the decks here, I'd probably go with Pendulum because I feel like Pendulum is the most well-rounded of these five. Offensively and going first, you're able to assemble a board with multiple negations and you don't really care too much about hand traps. I mean, it's very easy for Pendulum Magician to play through multiple hand traps, aside from like one or two specifically, but even then, stuff like Ogre isn't seeing a ton of play, at least relative to the other hand traps in the current metagame. And then you also defensively can just push through your opponent's play so well because of how many combo pieces the deck runs. It's just a very well-rounded deck. And again, it's pretty much proven that it's been able to compete. Again, kind of tied up there with like decks like Draco, kind of garnering one or two top cut slots every single time we have a premier event. So these are like the five decks I'm gonna go with for my number five slot. And any one of these is a very viable option. But moving on to number four, we have a deck that is only going to get better with the release of Dark Neo Storm, and that is Orcus. Danger Orcus specifically here in the TCG. Orcus is actually one of the strongest decks currently in the OCG post Dark Neo Storm format, and obviously the OCG and the TCG aren't identical formats, but I still think this deck has a ton of potential. Just with any two monsters, you're able to do a full Orcus combo, which is either going to kill your opponent with something like Burlesword Dragon, or you're just going to go ahead and end 
land on something like Azathoth, which we'll have to see how the ban list affects that, but even then, the deck is still incredibly potent. What I really like about this deck is that it's able to play through a ton of different hand traps just because of the way the deck is designed. And again, it is going to be interesting to see how Dark Neostorm does affect our format. And again, we still have other decks, you know, the ban list is going to really determine how those other decks are going to line up. But I feel like because Konami wants to sell these sets and there are these very strong Orcus cards that are going to be coming out, I feel like they're not really incentivized to hit Orcus too much because they want it to just kind of be another reason to buy Dark Neostorm. So I only have it at number four. I think it's going to be higher when we get into May solely because of the cards like the Xyz monster and the counter trap, which is really good as well. I think those are going to be reasons that the deck moves up in May, but for the time being, I think it's pretty solidified at that number four slot. Now, moving on to number three, we have another dangerous option in Danger Thunder Dragon. Danger Thunder Dragon has just been shy of getting its first premier win, but honestly, it's just been tearing it up on the regional scene. The deck is so explosive, so powerful, arguably one of, if not the most powerful combo deck of the format, because it's not only able to assemble just ridiculously overpowered boards with stuff like Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss or Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon or Zombie Stein, and it can do stuff like rip cards out of your opponent's hand with stuff like Leviathan or with Darkest Diabolos, and it's just like, it's got so many good tools and accessibility for doing so, but then going second, because you're playing a ton of different danger cards, you're able to just shred through all of your opponent's different forms of disruption, and it really doesn't matter because you can just summon so many powerful monsters and just OTK them, the deck really just does not care. Now, obviously, if it goes through so many disruptions, it's going to get stopped at some point, and that's why it's at number three on the list, because the first and second decks are able to just incorporate so many different hand traps and other forms of disruption in their strategies that it's really holding the deck back, but that doesn't mean that like it's way down the list at number three. Honestly, the first, second, and third deck are kind of like all fighting for number one, and any one of these decks could realistically win a premier event. So definitely do not count Danger Thunder Dragon out. I still believe it is the third best deck and is honestly a terrifying number three at that. But moving on to number two, we have a deck that a lot of people now have access to, but a lot of people are starting to get really sick of, and that is Salamangrate. Salamangrate just continues to impress me because it's so much like Zodiac in the fact that it's so consistent being able to pump out the same board turn after turn, and it doesn't have like anything inherently strong. I mean, outside of like something like Violet Chimera, the boards it makes aren't too impressive, but because it's able to just grind through in its control style, but also have some of these aggressive elements that it can close out games rather quickly, I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards the deck. It's just like a very well-balanced, strong deck. And again, I don't think it really does anything too unfair. Of all the decks we've had in the past of being like the best decks, Salamangrate is probably one of the most innocuous in that it's just a very good deck for what it is. It's super solid, super consistent. It has just a nice, well-rounded toolbox of abilities. And I think the fact that you're starting to see people just really going hard for the mirror match and the other matchups in the metagame, starting to play cards like Abyss Dweller and Baguska, this is how you know the format is starting to become more defined. And Salamangri is going to continue to be one of the strongest decks, if not the strongest deck in the future. And the reason I believe that is I don't think it's going to get touched on the upcoming ban list solely because I feel like it's too new. We've had other decks go much longer before a single card was even hit. So I feel like if anything, they want to keep this deck around for a little bit longer. And I don't think they're going to touch it till after the North American World Championship qualifier. We'll just have to see, but I definitely think Salamangrate is going to be sticking around for a very long time. But that brings us to my number one meta deck of the April 2019 format. And if you haven't already figured it out, I'm giving it to Sky Striker. I personally believe that this is going to be Sky Striker's last run because I feel that with the April 2019 ban list looming in the next couple of weeks, I feel that Sky Striker's time has come in that it's just been around for far too long. I mean, this deck has basically been tier one since its release back in Dark Saviors, which has been almost a year now since that set was originally released. And having a deck be tier one for the greater part of a year, yeah, I think a 
a lot of people are sick of it. Like people are starting to get sick of Salamangrate, but Sky Striker is just on an entirely different level. Sky Striker is just the better control deck. I mean, obviously Salamangrate has better aggressive tools to close out the game, but realistically Sky Striker doesn't care about closing out a game because it's just going to be able to outgrind the opponent no matter what, because you've got stuff like Kagari and Multiroll that can just recur infinite amount of resources and engage just drawing them unlimited cards. Like the deck is so, so powerful. And honestly, I really think this is going to be the biggest target for the ban list. So if you have the deck, you might want to just play it for the next couple of weeks because I can probably guarantee it's not going to be this good for very much longer. But that's always the showcase of the best deck when it's going to have the most targets on its back. And that's why I gave number one slot to Sky Striker. So guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about your top picks for the April 2019 format. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.